What's up guys, Mike MTG Jedi, and we're talking about dungeon teams today. I am on the free-to-play account where I've been spending a lot of my time. I've been really busy and I haven't had that much time to play, but I've still managed to find time to play on this second account. Been having a blast. Let's take a quick look at my champion pool. And uh, as you can see, I don't have very many champions, guys, okay? I have some rares that I've won from the campaign. I have a couple that I've opened from Ancient Shards. I have sacrificed, you know, a few, but overall, this is the majority of the champions I've ever had on my account. I've ne never had an epic champion yet, but we do have Lord Champ for it. Sorry, don't be mad at me. He's cool. I like him. But anyway, um, so as you can see, my champion pool is not very large. And this is pretty typical for how people start out the game. You know, maybe you're lucky enough to have your own legendary or epic, or maybe you're working with rares. Everything in the game, at least starting off, can be done with rares. But I actually think everything can be done with rares if you, uh, you know, put enough time and effort into it. So with that being said, you can only work with what you get, okay? War Maiden is one of the best rare champions, period, but you can get her for free, okay? One of the things that people don't realize is that in the campaign, there are champions that you can get just for fighting these stages. Now, um, and if you, another thing maybe you don't know, you can click on a lot of things in this game to help you out, okay? But, um... This is very rare to get these, okay? Most of the time you're going to get silver or mystery shards, but once in a while you get the champions, and then rarely you can get these rares. Rarely you can get rares, I know. <laughs> but uh, every, uh, every stage or almost every stage has a different rare that you can win. So if you're not happy with your account, you know, you can always come through here and win some rares to help you, all right? One of the ones I recommended to my son who started playing uh, is Spirit Host because she has a speed in all battles aura. She also heals herself. She places increased attack on all allies. And then she also removes all debuffs and places block debuffs. Okay, so um, this is a champion that a lot of people use early in the game. All right, and there are plenty of good champions that you can win. Wait, is it actually in this stage? This stage has one of the champions I was thinking about leveling up as well. Greybeard, he has a Provoke on his A1, he has a Freeze on his A2, and he has a Shield on himself, okay? Um, also the Counter-Attack, very good champion, okay? Um, and I want to say... I actually, I forget what stage it is. Did we already look at this one? We did... I was trying to tell him earlier what stage it was that you got another champion like that but I don't remember here's the stage for war maiden that you can get and she is very good um, there's the lizard men um, executioner another great rare Maybe you can't win him from a stage. Um, the uh, Diabolist is decent as well. Uh, and I'm trying to find, uh, there's another um, There's another Skinwalker that I like quite a bit as well. Um, I will bring him up since, uh, since I've been trying to find him. But uh, the other Skinwalker I'm talking about is Gnarlhorn. I think he's great because he has this AoE Provoke. Okay, whereas the other one, which is Greybeard, he has the Provoke on his A1, okay? Um, but either way, if you're struggling in certain areas of the game, you can go win yourself those rares. You have to be dedicated and, you know, do a lot of runs, but anytime you're doing runs in the campaign, you always want to be leveling up your champions. Now, as for your dungeon teams, I have the Force Keep here, which I've never run before. So the only thing I'm going to do for the Force Keep is I'm going to put in my champions that I've been using in almost every other area. And that's it. I, 
I don't know <laughs> if you were expecting like some complex process. Um, and we will get into some details in specifics, but like I put in I put in War Priest because she's green and green is good against red. You know, things like that are helpful, but this early in the game, it, it's not even that important what the colors are. You know, we can still easily beat this stage with these five champions, all right? And always make sure that you have five champions in there because everybody's going to be getting experience as well. And that adds up over time, okay? If you saw the last video, you might be saying, hey, I missed out on points here from not doing this. And you'd be right. Um, but, you know, that has my direct circumstances in involved here. So there are some abilities that the potion keep um, the bosses have, but they're not really important. Like if you go look at the ratings for champions, it's not like if they're rated as really good in a potion keep, like it's not that important. Okay, as you progress your account, you're gonna be easily able to beat stage 15. I know it might not seem like that right now because you're early game and you're just working your way through things. But you know, once you have a bunch of 60s, a bunch of six star champions, you'll easily be able to beat the stage 15s, okay? It's not a difficult part of the game. I would say the magic keep, the blue one, that is probably the hardest because the shield that he puts on himself is kind of hard to deal with, okay? Now, I would just keep going through there, and I'll probably do that later as well because I want some potions to rank up my war mate in there that you were seeing, right? So the blue keep right here, that's really the only one that you... I mean... You know, maybe you want to place a heal reduction um, in the spirit keep, but you can really just do a lot of damage there. The blue one, if you have a remove buff champion, um, a good example of a remove buff champion would be from stage one, right? I believe this guy has a remove buff. Here we go, Conqueror. So if you are having a hard time in the magic keep, come over here to this stage and win this champion and then level him up a little bit, okay? And the great thing about the early game is all of these champions that you're leveling up, even though they're not good, like War Priest, not good. Pig Sticker, I mean, she's okay, but not great. Elder, definitely not good. Skink, he's been fun, but no, he's not good, okay? All of these champions you're going to level up, and then you're going to use them to level up your other champions later, okay? Because remember, in order to upgrade the rank of a four-star, you need four other four-stars, okay? Now, you want to, like, get them, you know, you in order to rank up, here, here's a better example, okay? In order to rank up a three-star, you have to have three three-stars. And they can be level one. Don't waste energy, like, leveling them up. They can be level one, guys. Um, do I have anybody who I could do this with right now to show you? Yes. So you can use champions to level people up, okay? That works the same way as Bruise. They give you XP. And then once they reach their max level, it's 10 per star. So one stars can get to 10, two stars can get to 20, three stars can get to 30, four stars can get to 40, and five stars can get to 50, six stars can get to 60. And that's the max level. Now to rank them up, then you're going to choose two champions, any two that you want to, that are the same star. So once she's 20, then I need two two stars and now she becomes a three star, okay? And then I will eventually use her to rank up War Maiden along with a couple other three stars, okay? So anytime you can be running your dungeons with people who are ranking up, you should do that, okay? And remember, do your daily quests. It's super important. That's how you progress through the game is doing your daily quest. Even if you're not doing anything else, just come in here and do all of these daily quests. And eventually that will lead to you completing all of your weekly quests and your monthly quests. And that's how you play the game. All right. Now, uh, on to the rest of your dungeon teams. Okay. 
Um, so all five of the potion keeps, you're just going to use strong heroes. And then the blue keep is the one where, you know, you might want to remove buff for that shield. Um, the green one can be helpful to have a heal reduction, just like Fire Knight. Okay. Now the reason why I have Pig Sticker is because she has this chance to place heal reduction. Okay. Now for the Fire Knight here, you need two things. It's very helpful to have a heal reduction champion. Any champion with heal reduction will do that ability anywhere on the champion that will be that will do. Another thing that you want is champions that have multi hit abilities like this one attacks four times. The Fire Knight has a shield that you need to get through. So in order to get through that, you want a champion that hits multiple times. Okay. Um, what's the time on here? 104. Okay, let's go ahead and run this. I'll talk a little bit more while we're going through it. So, the Fire Knight and all of the dungeons, almost all the dungeons, have these waves. Okay, they have enemies in groups that you have to beat before you get to the boss. And in order to beat them, you want champions that do a lot of AoE, area of effect damage. Okay, your starter champion should be in all of your dungeon teams, period. Every single one. Whoever it is that you're focusing on ranking up should be in your, in your dungeon teams. And that's almost always your first starter champion, okay? So as you can see there, Gallic getting two hits on, got the shield down. But, you know, we have five hits to get through in order to get the shield down. Now, hopefully, <laughs> I have some people I don't normally use in here. Um, but uh, this is going to be a longer run. Um, <laughs> but you see Gallic there, two hits. Pig sticker there, only one. And she didn't get the heal reduction. Um, so if we could land the heal reduction, then he wouldn't heal back up like that. Okay. Now, I, I have these guys in here who those should probably be like, you know, more of like a real team. Um, these are just guys that I'm leveling up. So we are making progress and we have enough damage that I think we're going to be fine. And sometimes brute force is all you need in the beginning of the game. As you can see, we have yet to land the heal reduction. So this is taking a lot longer, but... Um, I have some champions that are ranked up a little bit, so we're going to be okay. We'll just push through and do enough damage to get through the shield. If I could land the heal reduction one time, um, but she hasn't got a turn while the shield's down. So that's been a problem. But that is the type of strategy that you want. Multi-hits and heal reduction, okay? And then later on, you can get more champions that will be specifically good for this dungeon, right? Like my dungeon team for Fire Knight on my main account uses some champions I don't use anywhere else, okay? And there we go, okay? Unfortunately, we got a brew there, but that's helpful too. We got some levels as well, okay? So that's the two things you want for the Fire Knight. For the dragon... Ideally, you would want to have champions that have poison, okay? Or do an enemy max HP type of a hit. I don't have any of those. So you can see I have basically the same team here, um, except this is more of a real team, I guess you would say, because it has my, my ranked up champions. Now I'm still gonna be gaining levels here and here because she's four star, so she can go higher. And he's five star, so he can go up to 50 as well. Now, we still want the same things for Dragon. We want champions who can defeat these, you know, the waves here. These champions who we have to fight before we get to the Dragon. We need people who can do area of effect damage and kill them so that we're not just hitting them repeatedly one at a time. Because that's how you get defeated normally. All right, um... War Maiden is very helpful here too because she get, does the decreased defense and uh, I will be ranking her up on my account for sure, for sure. Um, when you get to the dragon, you can do this manually, guys, just FYI. Like, you don't have to run everything on auto, although that is nice. But um, 
The dragon kind of gives you these extra turns where he breathes in like this, but if you don't do enough damage, then he does a big attack on you. Okay, if you do enough damage, then he skips one of his attacks, which is great. Okay, so if you keep getting those breath attacks, then you probably want to go back down a level or two. Um, but it depends on if you're winning. You know, sometimes I can still win while he's using that ability. Sometimes I can't. But you'll notice the heal reduction did get placed here from Pig Sticker. That doesn't really matter. Um, but a decrease attack is very helpful on a couple of these bosses as well. Uh, I personally like decrease attack on the dragon as well as the ice golem okay the fire knight yeah i'm sure it would be helpful but um you know it, it's not essential so here um my guys are gonna die but that doesn't really matter it only matters if we win and we definitely will because i've run this stage a number of times Ooh, speed gear Ooh, that's great guys attack percentage hp percentage speed Ooh. That's a good one. We're going to rank that up for sure. That's going on, somebody. All right, so um, you just want to fight the stages that you can beat, the ones that you can consistently beat. Like, I'm pretty sure I can beat stage 9, but it's going to be iffy, okay? It's going to be hard. So I want to fight the stages that I'm confident I can beat. And as soon as you can start hitting stage 7, you want to spend a lot of time in the dragon because it's going to give you speed gear, accuracy, lifesteal. And the rest are okay too. Okay, but those are the three main ones that you use. Speed is the best set in the game. Fight me if you dare, but you're wrong. And I'm right, but you're not going to fight me because everyone agrees that speed's the best set. So... Um, and accuracy and lifesteal, extremely helpful as well. Let's see. We have Ice Golem, which I'm not going to fight through on camera. Uh, but I'm going to end up using the same team here, guys. Actually, Lord Champfort should be first because paying attention to your aura can be really helpful as well. Like, I could put Skink here. He's going to increase the blue attack values. Okay? I could put her here. But she's not going to help because that's the Doom Tower, all right? Gallic would work HP in all battles, but Lord Champfort has HP in dungeons, which this is a dungeon, right? Now, um, you want more sturdy and survivable champions if you can for Ice Golem. And like having a healer here is a good idea because the Ice Golem hits hard and he gets a lot of extra attacks. And in addition... If you have someone on your roster that does decrease attack and or decrease accuracy, those are both very good to have against the Ice Golem. Another thing that would be good is Block Revive and Conqueror, that champion I mentioned earlier from Stage 1. He does have a Block Revive, so maybe he's worth looking into. Okay. Um, and last but not least, the hardest one for early game is going to be the spider okay i beat stage two but it was it was rough okay you, you need to focus on getting a good spider team um but early on beating the spider you just want a lot of aoe damage okay but as you can see i don't have a lot of options right now so i'm basically using the same team in all the dungeons and that should be how it is for you as well once I get War Maiden ranked up a little bit more, I'll probably be using her there. But a lot of these places, I've been using champions that are not fully ranked up because I'm getting some XP by fighting with them. And then Minotaur, you can run. I, I don't recommend running Minotaur until you can really beat Stage 15, other than for missions, because... Um, you're going to get random scrolls on random people, and it's going to be wasteful. So I, I try to avoid Minotaur for, for most of the early game, and then use gems to farm my masteries. So let me know in the comments below, what more questions do you have about the dungeons, your teams for them? If you have specific questions about your roster, I can answer those. But let me know what you think about the dungeons, and uh was this helpful let me know um you can also show me your support by hitting the subscribe button it's probably over there i don't know somewhere um that way 
<laughs> you know where the subscribe button is. Anyway, that's going to tell me that you're enjoying the videos as well if you don't want to comment below. But uh, I do my best to answer all of the comments on all my videos. Thank you so much for watching. I'm the one and only MTG Jedi, and you're great. Have a wonderful day. Thank you.